Hey everyone, this is DJTM doing a quick follow-up tutorial on how to do mapping with modifiers. In one of my last tutorials I showed you how to map the filters on the Control F1 to the main mixer filters for each deck. And that's the same setup I'll use here, just my Control F1 and tractor on my laptop. But what I'm going to do is actually walk you through modifiers. So assuming you understand those basic mapping concepts, you need modifiers if you want to do things like a shift and a button or a knob, or holding some other button and then turning a knob or a button or pressing another button. So modifiers are the way that you do the shift style mappings with two or more buttons pressed together. You can also use modifiers if you want to set a state in your controller. Uh, and that's where some of the really complex mappings uh, utilize that function so you could have one button puts you in deck A and another button puts you in deck B and based on that modifier then when you go and turn knobs and press buttons it knows that if I'm in state X then I should be in deck X for example. So here's the first step you need to understand a very simple mapping. I'm gonna press the add in button and before I do that just stepping back, you can see I've got my Tractor F1 selected as my input device. So I'm going to go find in the mixer the filter adjust function. And I'm going to go ahead and now press learn, step two. Turn the knob on my control F1. It gets picked up here as filter.1. And I'm going to make it forced to deck A. It's a trick I showed in the previous tutorial. And we'll enable the override factory map here. Um, the problem with this mapping is, is that, okay, now when I turn the knob on my control F1, you can see the filter knob up here in tractor will actually move. But I've now destroyed the ability to control the filter slots down in the remix deck. For example, if I move knobs two, three, and four, you can see that those operate the remix deck as normal. So what I'm gonna do is add the modifier so that I can hold shift on the F1 and actually then turn the filter knob and then it will not interfere with the main job of the filter knob on the F1. So here we go. You want to add another input but instead of selecting a function you scroll down to the bottom here where it says modifier and you set one of the modifiers. Now what you need to know here when you're starting out is that you can access pretty much all of these modifiers but as you get more and more modifiers being used on a single controller then you need to be conscious of which one is in which state. So each modifier can have a value from 1 to 8 by memory. And you can use them in multiple different scenarios, but in this case, again, a basic example, let's choose modifier number 1. Now, it's just like any function in Tractor. You do learn, and you press the button that'll turn on this modifier. Here, I'm going to press the shift button. You can see it's picked up shift and learn. Now, these modifier conditions are if statements. So like if you're a programmer, you'll understand very quickly. But if not, you don't need to do anything here. This is the if the modifier has some value, you actually do this mapping. So when you're setting up the modifiers, often you'll ignore this. Now it's picked up that that was a button that I press. And the interaction mode here is important. So hold is hold the state while I hold the button. Direct, again, is very similar to hold for a button. You could increment, which will just add one to the modifier value, decrement or reset. So I'm gonna turn on the hold so that when I hold the button, the modifier will be set to a certain value. And here, down the button, the bottom in the button options where it says set value, I'm gonna set the value to one. And you assign these at a global tier. So there's no deck specific modifiers. So now you can already go and test this. You can see at the top here in the controller manager window that there's these modifier states, modifier one, two, three, and so on. So if I now press the shift button on the F1, you can see that this first zero or was a zero, each time I press that and I'll press and release and press and release, that modifier changes. And if I was to make this value two, Every time I press shift, press, release, press, release, right? You can see that that changes from two and as soon as I let go of that button, it returns to the default zero and that's because I'm using the hold state. If I was to use increment, 
you'll notice these parameters down the bottom change. Each time I press shift now, press, and now it's one, and press again is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, sorry, seven, so zero to seven. Now it won't go any further even over press. Uh, but what I'll do is go back to the hold and set the value to one. So each time I hold shift now and release, the modifier goes to zero, press it goes to one, release it goes to zero. So that's working perfectly. So now you need to use that modifier in your mapping of the button that you want to use to button presses. So here we have the filter adjust and all you need to do is remember that modifier condition and you say M1, so the modifier is M1, value is one, and that's the if statement. Now that you've activated that, everything to do with this mapping will only happen if the modifier conditions are true, and in this case, if M1 equals one. And now we've got the override factory map. So here's where it gets cool. So just a reminder, if I press the shift button on the F1, that will turn M1 equal to one. And if I turn the filter knob and that modifier is active, I'm actually going to adjust the main filter in Tractor. So pull back out here into Tractor and see how this works. If I just turn the filter knob, look at the filter in the remix deck, that changes as normal. But if I now hold shift and turn the filter knob, you'll notice that up here in Tractor's main EQ that the filter knob is now moving, but down here in the remix deck, nothing moves while I move that. Now what gets a little funky here is if I set that filter, say, all the way to 100%, now I release shift, as soon as I move the filter knob, you notice that the remix deck jumps to just beneath the value that it was set to over here because the knob was physically at 100%, so as soon as I moved it to 99%, the value in the remix deck jumped. The way you manage that if you need to, if you're having problems with that, is go back into the, the actual knob or the button mapping, and that's why this soft takeover works. And it's designed to help you find a sort of 50% blend between the position of the hardware knob and the position that you're trying to move to, or, or the, sorry, halfway between the hardware and the software control that you're dealing with. Now I'll have to manually reset all of these, just to, oh, turn my, I'll turn my knob to zero and reset everything. So now if I turn the filter knob with just on its own, again you can see the remix deck is changing. Now if I hold shift, same, same function, just the filter knob is moving. But again now if I leave that at 100%, release shift, and now just turn the filter knob, you'll see that actually that still jumped all the way up. So that soft takeover didn't quite work as I expected, but that one's worth playing with. So hopefully that gives you a quick overview of a more complex modifier mapping in Tractor and getting a, for example, a shift or a button and a knob working together to give you access to more functions. All right, hit me up on the Native Instruments forums or at djtmhire.com.